Breaking news this morning, four of the world's largest crude oil producers, including Saudi Arabia and Russia, agreeing to freeze output after talks in Qatar. Phil Flynn at the CME Group in Chicago with the latest here. So freezing production, that was the headline that got the market moving again. What does this mean for the price of oil, Phil? Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, at least it's the first step in showing any restraint in production in the world. And seeing that Saudi Arabia was actually in on this meeting, it is very significant. Now, the initial report of this meeting between uh, Qatar, Venezuela, Russia, and Saudi Arabia really got the market going because they were hoping that they were going to announce a production cut. They didn't get the cut, but they did get a freeze. But still, it's significant, Maria, because now we're showing at least these producers are saying enough is enough with the low prices. We're going to take steps to at least try to rein in production. There has been no restraint on production since the last OPEC meeting. This is the first sign. Now the big thing is, are you going to get the other big players to come in line? That's Iran and that's Iraq. Back to you. Hi, Phil. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be watching that. Uh, Lenore, we've been waiting for a move like this for a while uh, in terms of somebody blinking, saying, yeah, we will cut production. Yeah, but and, do we and, believe it? Well, first, they're, they're not really cutting. They're just going to freeze. And I find it very hard to believe that this is actually going to pan out. I mean, Saudi Arabia and Russia are having a bit of a proxy war in Syria. So it's not like those two are getting along so well. Russia, it's very difficult to actually enforce something like this because Russia has so many producers for them to actually go and make sure that the production has truly been cut. And these guys still can make money at these prices. Many of them can. I mean, Saudi Arabia's production costs are somewhere between 10 and $20. And while this is less than ideal. They need that money. They have budgets in U.S. dollars that they need to cover, and they've already got an enormous deficit. You've got sovereign wealth mm. funds all over the world struggling because of this oil price cut. I, I don't know if it's tough, if to, it's, it's tough to keep it. If it's enough to move the needle on the price of oil, Dagan, right? Because it's not just, first of all, it's a supply and a demand story. Yeah. Not just a supply story. Right. And a lot of the downward pressure on oil this year has been concerns about declines in demand or dramatically slowing growth. Demand's still growing in China, but how much is that growth slowing? Yeah. So you've got the offset of weak demand. And the only economy that's still standing right now, for the most part, is the United States. How right. does the demand hold up here? And then the supply, again, it's just, it's just holding steady. It's not a cut. Investors were really, really one banking on a production cut. Yeah. And historically, it normally takes more than one actual cut for us to see a turnaround. We haven't really ever seen we're just one cut and okay, we're good. We're at the bottom. Right. And you also have to worry about the producers here in the United States, the ones that are struggling to stay in business and to avoid bankruptcy at this point. And by the way, when you're talking yeah. about a cut, you have to also talk about cheat errors. They're going to yeah. cheat. You know that because every time they say that they're not going to, you know, they're going to cut, they're, yeah. they're cheating. You, you guys all stop and I will. I yeah, promise. exactly. <laughs> That's they don't the, want to lose market sure. share. In, in particular. It's, a, it's a, a hard situation with oil where it is because there aren't any indications it goes much higher.